Welcome to Webcast Worship, recorded by your friends at Grace Presbyterian Church. I'm Pastor Neil. This is week four of a six-week effort to honor the past and secure the future of our church's mission through a targeted type of prayer. Last week, we focused on resources. Lord, what would you have me do with them. This week, we plan to focus on a more general asset, time. Lord, what would you have me do with my time? I'll be talking about that at length a little bit later in this webcast. But first, I invite you to listen to the stories of two families who have been blessed by the time that they spent in this community and by the time that several of you have spent with them. Uh, my name is Marcia Burroughs. My husband, Brandon Burroughs, and I both joined the church right after Neil came to the church. We were in his first new members class. We did a lot of searching for previous churches, and we also followed the same theory or pattern for this one. We went to several churches and just wanted to find a pastor that we could say, I like the way he presents. I like his message and how are the people? The people here are so gracious and we just fell in love with it. Brandon's been very active with finance and session. I've been very active with deacons and I've assisted with Vacation Bible School. We have wonderful resources and that's what kind of ties us together as a community. I'm Ashley Chaston. I'm Robert Chaston. And this is Carlisle, and we also have two other daughters, Annalise and London. Uh, we started attending Grace Presbyterian a few months before the COVID shut down, um, but we were just so amazed at how wonderful everyone was, and we um, are just lucky to be involved. I'm the Sunday School Director here. I help with the buildings and grounds. And he also helps a lot with all the youth and children. I try to. I try to. <laughs> Ooh, we got a few of them. Uh, the most recent one that we have is this one here was baptized uh, by Pastor Neil. And that was uh, going to be one we're definitely going to hold on to forever. Some of the other things that we, we got to be involved in was the Hope Ranch Animal Shelter. We got to do volunteer service with them. That was pretty great. Uh, we had the Sunday school uh, movie night that we did. And uh, is there anything I'm missing? Um, we were really blessed by everyone coming together to celebrate Carlisle's birth as well with yes. a baby shower. And that was a really happy memory for me to it be was. with our church family to celebrate that. It was. That was all a surprise on us, too. They just kind of dawned it on us and without any preparation or knowledge. It was nice. One of the things that we find very, very rewarding and enjoyable is the fellowship committee's efforts to have dinners for eight and dinners for gatherings. Um, it's a way to meet other people in a very non-threatening environment, hopefully, and no pressure. And it's always fun to sit on somebody's patio and have a glass of wine. So we enjoy the fellowship activities. I enjoy helping with VBS when we're allowed to have VBS. So looking forward to that again this year. Thank you, Marcia, Brandon, Ashley, Robert, and Carlisle for sharing a bit of your experience here at Grace Presbyterian Church. Having been encouraged by the ways that God has worked in your lives, I invite all of those who are listening to join me in this morning's call to worship. 
It comes from Psalm 103, and you are invited to say the bold-faced lines. As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. For he knows how we are formed. He remembers that we are dust. As for mortals, they are like grass. They flourish like flowers of the field. The wind blows over it and it is gone, and its place remembers it no more. But from from everlasting to everlasting everlasting is the Lord's love with those who fear him, him, and his righteousness with their children's children, with those who keep his covenant and remember to obey his precepts. Hi boys and girls, it's Ashley, and this week we're gonna talk about time. Do you know what this is? It is an hourglass, but really more specifically in this scenario, it's a minute glass. You might see this when you play a board game like Cranium. So I want you to think about other events that are timed. Maybe taking a test or the shot clock on a basketball scoreboard or a football game. Sometimes the timer just keeps on going even when we wanna stop and take a breath. We can't stop the timer and you can't stop the timer in life either. We don't have a minute glass in front of us in real life, not usually, but if we did, it would help us to remember that time is fleeting. It's not a continuous resource. Every minute we waste is one that we can't get back. So think about all the time that you spend in front of your phone or in front of TV. I'm guilty of it too, instead of spending that time with Jesus. Or think about the comic books that you read, that you could spend that time reading the Bible. Those are wasted opportunities to spread the word of God and to show our love for Jesus. Don't let your time run out to do those things. Don't waste the time God has given you. So this week, let's pray that you live as if you have an hourglass in front of you and that you notice every single minute that you spend and make sure that you use it to the best of your advantage to show your love for Jesus. Have a good week. 
Thank you, Ashley, for sharing that vital message about time. Since children aren't the only ones who might struggle now and then to use time well, I invite all of you to join me in this morning's prayer of confession. Dear, Dear God, God, it is so easy to be careless in our use of time. Rather than using time to savor all the beauty you have brought into this world, we focus on the ugliness and the pettiness that we see. Rather than using time to thank you for the blessings that you bring, we squander time by thinking that we really should have more. Rather than using time and energy to touch the lives of others, we squander time with selfish acts that separate us from others. Forgive us for our folly and show us through your mercy how to live a life of blessing and to bring that gift with others. For we, we do, do ask, ask it in our Savior's, Savior's holy name. name. Amen. Amen. From the time of Abraham until today, God has called human beings into relationship with the divine. God has never abandoned God's people. God will not abandon you. Hear the good news of the gospel. In Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Hi, I'm Kathy Nelson, and most of you know I work in the church office, and um, it has been a blessing to me over the years, many times, uh, to work in the office. In um, 1998, I lost my job working with the County of Orange due to the bankruptcy, and I had Bill Webster offer me the job as financial secretary. So I took that, and then in... Um, 2009, I became the caregiver for my mom, and so the church was able to work with me on the hours I came in and worked, and, and that was just a blessing to me. Um, I believe the Holy Spirit led me to grace in a very short time span. My then five-year-old daughter, Emily, started asking me about God. I had um, a new neighbor move in, and she was asking me what were some of the good churches in the area. And then I had, uh, well, at that time, Grace began an outreach telephone campaign, and I was one of the people that they called. And I had the sweetest lady talk to me and, and um, ask me to attend Palm Sunday service that she would meet me out front and look for me and my three kids. And um, so I, I ended up, I went that Sunday, and I haven't left. My fondest memory of Grace is the time when my kids were in youth group, and they had an exceptional youth leader who they respected, and they adored her. Um, they were involved in mission work, and they went on mission trips in the summer. They did that for several years, and um, the group, the youth group was so tight that 
my kids' best friends were the kids here at church, and that made me feel really good as a parent. Um, and I want that for the parents and the children that are going here now and in the future. Um, I want Grace to be in a position to provide that atmosphere with more staff and better programs and, and multiple activities for its members. Um, we as a church are not financially able to do that right now. Uh, so we need to get back on track, paying off the mortgage in the 20 years we agreed to with PILP. We have been in this building for 15 years, so that would we would be so close to paying off that mortgage. So supporting the honor campaign will get us where we should be. We're almost there. strength when I am weak. You are the treasure that I seek. You are my all in all. Seeking you as a precious jewel, Lord, to give up I'd be a fool. You are my all in all. Taking my sin, my cross, my shame, rising again. Now is the time in our service when we share news of our church family. And we've got some good news to share. First, this is the week of town hall meetings, brief gatherings of church members to reflect upon the blessings that many have received through our God and the ways that you might choose to respond. These meetings are part of our effort honor the past, and secure the future here at 31143 Nicholas Road, so you will have a chance to ask questions about that project, too. Most of these gatherings will be held in person, but at least one of them will be online, so call us at the church office if you would like to take part. Second, 
you're invited to join us for a celebration banquet to be held in our church building on Saturday, May 15th. This will be our first church supper in 15 months, and it's going to be so much fun. We'll share good music and good laughter and good food. We'll also share the opportunity to invest in the future that our God has planned for us. If you'd like to participate, just call us at the church office and we'll make sure there is a place for you. Third, next week is Mother's Day. So be sure to reach your mom and let her know how very much she means to you. We'll also honor moms in worship on that day, including the virtual moms who served our kids in Sunday school and picnics and vacation Bible school. Some may not have raised children on their own, but they've helped us to raise ours and we are so very grateful for their efforts in this church. Moving on to prayer concerns. I hope that you will remember Barbara Carter, Carol Nash's sister-in-law, who is battling metastatic cancer. I also hope you will remember Nick McMullen, Sarah Stevens' fiance, who is suffering from a new bout of chronic illness. I hope you'll pray for our president and the leaders of both parties that they might find some way to work together. I hope you'll pray for the people of India who are battling the world's worst spike of COVID-19. And I hope you'll pray for those throughout the world who are still threatened by the economic and social cost of that disease. With those thoughts in mind, let us pray. Dear Lord, we are so grateful for your presence with us. Even when we are distracted or disheveled, you do make time for us. Lo, I am with you always. Encouraged by that promise, we intercede for those who are struggling on this Lord's Day. We remember those who are grieving. Comfort them. We remember those who are struggling with physical illness. Ease their sense of pain. We remember those who are struggling with discouragement. Help them find new life in you. We remember those who are threatened by forces beyond their own control. Touch them, save them, draw them to the shelter of your arms. Finally, God, we pray for us, each one of us, that we might become vessels of your healing grace within the lives of others. We do ask it in Christ's holy name. Amen. Please join me now in the prayer our Savior taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Having spent some time in prayer, it's appropriate for us to spend some time in Scripture, focusing for this morning on a very famous poem about time. It's appropriate for weddings, and it's appropriate for funerals. It's appropriate for baptisms, and it's appropriate for retirement celebrations, too. 
It comes to us from the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 3, beginning with verse 1. I invite you to listen now for the Word of God to you. To everything there is a season, and a time for every task under heaven, a time to be born, a time to die, a time to sow, a time to reap, a time to kill, a time to heal, a time to demolish, a time to build, a time to weep, a time to laugh, a time to mourn, a time to dance, a time to scatter stones, and a time to gather them, a time to embrace, a time to refrain, a time to seek, a time to lose, a time to keep, and a time to throw away, a time to tear, a time to mend, a time to be silent, a time to speak, a time for love, a time for hate, a time for war, a time for peace. What does the worker gain from the, his toil? I have seen the task God uses to employ us. He has made everything beautiful in its time. He has also put a sense of eternity into the human heart. Yet no one can discern what God has done from the beginning until the end. I know there is nothing better for humans than to rejoice and to do good with their lives, that each should eat and drink and seek value in his labor. This is a gift of God. I know that everything God does will endure forever. Nothing can be added to it and nothing taken away. God has done this so humans will revere him. What is has already been, and what will be has been before, and God seeks what has been chased away. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. I figure this is as good a Sunday as any to start my sermon with a confession. I'm terrible with time. There's no internal clock. No internal sense of how long things really take. Some people have no sense of direction. Left, right, up, down, it's all the same to them. I have no sense of time. I can start a good book, a really good book, and time flies. I might think it's 8 o'clock, but it's midnight. Four hours are just gone even worse, I can start a jigsaw puzzle of perhaps 500 pieces, thinking I will stop for the day within an hour or two. Eight hours later, I'm still at it. Having missed a couple of meals along the way, when I'm in that frame of mind, I've got to finish just one section, the lighthouse or the shrubbery or the sky, but then when I have done it, I see another section halfway through. There's still a few slots missing over there. What's really missing is time. When I get captivated by something like that, I'm sort of like Rip Van Winkle. The rest of life goes dormant and time flies. To use another image, when I really get excited, Sort of like a dog and a scent, especially in writing sermons. I can't just go from A to B in a straight line. I have to wander here and there and there and go around the barn. Eventually, I get to my destination. I really do get there in the end, but I have no clue in most cases how long that's going to take. 10 hours, 12 hours. 20 hours. Who knows? It varies every week. Of course, I have known others who are much better with time. To me, they're almost like machines, so measured, so precise. This walk is 16 minutes. That task is 19 minutes. That job takes 37 minutes. How do they do that? I have no idea. 
That skill is just mind-boggling to me. So I also feel a bit inferior to those who have it. Fortunately for me and folks like me, the Bible is less concerned with measuring time well than with using time well, employing it for God's purposes in the world. And those purposes can vary dramatically, as you can see in this morning's text. According to this passage, there's a time for every task under heaven, a time to sow, a time to reap, a time to mourn, a time to dance, a time to kill, a time to heal, a time to weep, a time to laugh, a time to tear, a time to mend. And that's only half of the tasks found on this list. The question is, which task should I do now, at this moment, on this day? In the chapters that lead up to this famous poem, the writer tells us repeatedly about the things we should not do, at least if we want to be happy, because he has tried them all. He spent time seeking knowledge. He spent time seeking power. He spent time seeking pleasure. And he spent time gaining wealth. But in the course of time, he learned that all of these endeavors were meaningless, ultimately meaningless. As the first verse of chapter 1 declares through a wonderful Hebrew word, fleeting, ephemeral, pointless. Everything is pointless. Thinking back on his own use of time, this writer was not happy. In fact, one could reasonably argue that he was close to despair. And that's a very odd thing. We know that he had power. We know he had influence. We know that he had wealth. Nonetheless, that he was miserable for years. Tradition ascribes this famous poem to King Solomon. Modern scholars aren't sure of that, but they're sure of this. The writer, usually called Koalath in Hebrew, had it all. Everything a man could want, but everything was not enough for him until he turns his focus away from himself. Two chapters are all about him, his wants, his dreams, his needs. But this chapter is different. You can sense it in his poem about time. There's a sense of order, a sense of rhythm, a sense of calm that was not present early on. But you really don't understand it. You do not grasp the change until you reach the end of this list, this long and rhythmic list, because that is where he turns his eyes to God. Once he makes that turn from his own wants unto God's work, God shows him three quite dramatic things. First, Koleth discovers that God makes all things beautiful in their time. Two words are crucial here. The first is all, all things, even those we don't see as beautiful. There's a hidden beauty in every kind of landscape, even those that might seem desolate at the start. And there's a hidden beauty in every type of person, even those that might seem challenging at the start. Bald heads can be beautiful, at least according to my wife, Kim. 
And wrinkles can be beautiful as well. Just depends on how you see them. That's the first point from this verse. Here's the second one. It takes time. Just as most women spend time becoming beautiful each day, God spends a lot of time creating beauty in the world. Just think about the flowers we enjoyed this spring. If those flowers sprung up from bulbs, first there was the shoot, then there was the stalk, then there was the leaf, then there was the bulb, then and only then the full flower burst into sight. But all of that takes time. So a big part of this life is catching beauty in its time. Koalath got that. When he turned his eyes from his appetites to the beauty in the world around him, he began to see that God makes all things beautiful in their time. That's the first discovery in this text. Here's the second one. Koalath discovered blessing. Three simple sources of God's blessing within this world. The good news is that each of these sources is accessible to us, each one of us. The first of these is food, simple, daily food. Perhaps he thought of barley. Perhaps he thought of olives. Perhaps he thought of bread. We don't know, but we do know this. Every single meal we eat is a gift from God. The second channel of God's blessing is drink. Probably fresh water or good wine back in those days. Today, we might add coffee, tea, or soda. Of course, they're processed at a factory but ultimately, these two are a gift from God. The third channel of God's blessing is labor, meaningful labor, the kind that enables us to see some value in our work. Not just value in the paycheck or value in the status of the job. Those things don't make much difference in the end, what matters most is mission. What matters most is purpose. What matters is the people that you serve. After all, even the most tedious kind of labor can have deep meaning if you do it with a heart to serve. You might be cleaning something filthy. You might be digging in hard dirt. You might be hauling rocks away. But that work can have great meaning if you choose to do it carefully and well, there's a lot of pride in that. So work can be a blessing, food can be a blessing, and drink can be a blessing if we understand them all to be gifts of God. That's Coles' second major insight in this text. Here's the last one. When thinking of God's role within the world around him, he also finds compassion. Kolas sees God's compassion for people who are suffering in some way. In a line that's often overlooked in most English translations, Kolas declares that God seeks what has been chased away. I love that line. The Hebrew word that I translated chaste is radaf. can also mean hounded, mistreated, or abused. And so much of the Bible story describes God's ways of solving that. The Hebrews were mistreated within the land of Egypt. So God sought them and God led them out. The prophet Elijah was mistreated by King Ahab and Queen Jezebel. So God sought him in the wilderness 
and God brought him out. The exiles were mistreated in the land of Babylon by those who wished to make them minstrels. So God sought them in that place, and God brought them out. The lepers were mistreated by those who cast them out of the temple and the city of Jerusalem. But Jesus sought them out, and Jesus cared for them. After Jesus rose from the dead, his first apostles were often hounded and cast out. But God sought them through his Spirit, and God cared for them. The bottom line is simply this. Our God seeks what has been chased away. But what does that mean for us, for you and I today? If it's God who brings forth beauty, if it's God who brings forth blessing, if it's God who seeks those people who have been chased away, how should that affect the way we spend our time? Three points I think are key. First, we should spend time seeking God's beauty. Be intentional. Be direct. If it's God who brings forth beauty, then every tree and flower is in fact a sign from God. Some days they might seem ordinary. Some days they might seem plain. But seek them out at sunrise or notice them at sunset. And everything has changed. Suddenly there are colors. Suddenly there are patterns. Suddenly there are veins and leaves you did not see before. I'll never forget when we first came to California and drove through Chaparral, most of which was ugly to my mind. Having grown up in a place where grass was always green, or almost always green, I did not enjoy the sight of brown grass, tall brown grass. The chaparral creates most of the year. But then I happened to see that grass at dusk, just before the sun had set, and I noticed that it looked like fur. The hillsides were clothed in fur, if you caught them at just the right time of day. And it was beautiful. It really was. So the first thing we can do with at least some of our time is to seek beauty. Because that is a form of worship, too. The second thing we can do is to savor God's blessing. Don't just gulp it. Sip the coffee, just like you sip on wine. Taste the food. Don't just inhale it. And think about the flavors. Was that cardamom or sage? Notice what is going into your mouth. You also need to appreciate work. Even when it's tedious, even when it's frustrating, even when some coworkers drive you wild, you need to see it as a gift from God. Because we're not made to be consumers. We're made to be creators. Just like our creator God, we're made to give something back. That's why self-esteem so often drops in retirement. There's not enough to do. But self-esteem can rise if you volunteer. Volunteer to be an usher. Volunteer to be a greater. Volunteer for mission trips. Volunteer to help the kids at VBS. You can bless so many folks when you retire. You can also bless them in your working years. 
if you see work as a gift of God, so much is a matter of attitude, starting each and every morning with a few questions. Who can I bless today? Who can I serve today? Who can I help today? God, show me that. If you start work with that attitude, you'll love it. Even when the days are long. To use your time well, you need to savor life's simple blessings, food, drink, work. You need to see them as true gifts from God. You also need to seek out beauty within the world around us. Spend time in God's creation so that you can applaud. The last thing you can do to spend time well is to share in God's compassion. Like God, seek out the harried, those who feel chased away. Like Christ, seek out the wounded, those who have been broken in some way. Like God, the Holy Spirit, find some way to encourage those who are downhearted and depressed. If we let our God lead, good things happen. They really do. One of the most powerful things that you can do is pray. Not just for other people, but with other people. First, you need to listen. Listen to their problems. Listen to their struggles. Listen to their needs. Then at some point, simply ask them, can we pray? Can I intercede for you? Even non-believers, more, than, more often than not, will say yes. And when you lift their needs up to our God, they'll appreciate it. They really will. They'll appreciate your request to God to touch them, bless them, save them, as only God can do. So let them feel through prayer both your kindness and your grace. When people have big problems, you can't fix them. You can't save them. You can't make things right, and they know that. They don't expect you to fill that role. God can fill it, but it usually takes time. In the meantime, if you listen to these people and you pray to God for their needs, you can show them that God cares here and now. You can show them that you care as well. On her 21st birthday in 1947, Queen Elizabeth II gave a very famous speech her father had died young from cancer, and her famous uncle had abdicated power for personal gratification. So most people did not know how this young queen would handle power. In response to their queries and to time she spent in prayer, Queen Elizabeth said this, I declare before you all that my whole life, whether it be long or short, shall be devoted to your service and to the service of our great imperial family, meaning the family of nations, to which we all belong. Queen Elizabeth II kept her vow being devoted to their service through many ups and downs and becoming in due time a great symbol for her land throughout the world. Well into her 90s, she continues to use time well. 
What about you? Like me, you might be weak when asked to measure time, but you can still be strong when asked to use your time as a follower of God. If you seek God's beauty, if you savor God's blessing, and if you share our God's compassion for those who are in need, then the time you have in life will be well spent. Thanks be to God. Amen. On the first Sunday of each month, it is our custom to include each worship service with the sacrament of the Lord's Supper. If you would like to participate, simply pause this video long enough to gather whatever bread you might have on hand or whatever beverage you might wish to share with those around you then resume this recording to share this sacrament with us. If you'd rather just watch us, that is fine. But it can be very meaningful to include the bread and juice in your home as well. Scripture teaches that on the night he was betrayed, our Lord took bread. Having given thanks, he broke it, saying, This is my body, broken for you. Do this as often as you eat it, in remembrance of me. In a similar way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This is the cup of the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. And finally, the apostle reminds us that as often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. Encouraged by those words from Scripture, I invite you to lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It's it is right to, to give our, our thanks and praise. praise. Gracious God, we do thank you. Let the heavens be joyful, the earth be glad. We bless you for creating the whole world, for your promises to the people of Israel, for the prophets who reminded them of your holy calling, and for Jesus Christ in whom your fullness dwells. Born of Mary, he shares our life. Eating with sinners, he welcomes us. Visiting the sick, he heals us. Dying on the cross, he saves us. Rising from the dead, he gives new life. Thus, it is with thanksgiving that we take this bread and cup, receive our sacrifice of praise, then pour out your Holy Spirit upon us, that this meal might become for us a true communion in the body and blood of our Lord. Unite us in faith, inspire us to love, call us to serve, until we join the saints in every time and place, saying, Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor are yours, mighty God, now and forever. Amen. Now you are invited to participate in this sacrament as the communion music plays Use whatever bread you might have gathered, whatever beverage you might have on hand to join us at this table, or perhaps just to join us with your presence and your prayers. If you're alone this morning, thank God for those people who have fed your heart and soul as you consume both bread and juice. And if you're not alone, thank God for the person who sits beside you or the person who used to sit there, and ask God to bless them through your words and deeds this day. Then conclude these holy moments by focusing on the love that draws us all together, a love whose breadth and depth was embodied 
and the life and death of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Please join me in prayer. Gracious God, we thank you for this mystery in which you give yourself to us. May we who have received these elements be strengthened in your service. We who have sensed your presence reveal that grace to others. And we who have heard your gospel proclaim your grace and truth. For we do ask it in your holy name. Amen. Hear the good news of the gospel. Wherever you go, God goes with you. Wherever you are, God is already there. The same God who dwells in you has something he wants to do through you where you are. So go forth with God's blessing to bless the lives of others others, seeking out God's beauty, savoring God's blessings, and sharing God's compassion for those you know and love. Amen. <laughs>